Hello everybody. Today I'm going to give you a case review that's really important because it's what's called a case of first impression. And when the Court of Appeals says that, what they mean is that they're deciding something that's never been decided previously under the law in Indiana. And it's amazing that it's not ever been decided before, but it's really talking about who are children under the terms of a trust. And when we're looking at inheritances and how we provide for our children and grandchildren, it's just uh, you know very important the way you describe it in your estate planning documents. And this case is really it's really a neat one because it's multi generational. It's uh, it's very fact sensitive. It describes what children are under the statute, and it deals with an adoption. So uh, all of those things are very common today, and it's a it's kind of a convoluted family story, but it's beautiful because we start with a great grandmother, and this is really great grandma's trust, and she provides for her grandson, but then it's really for her great grandchildren that are the beneficiaries that end up having to fight about this case with their stepmother. And um, it, it's kind of neat. So the, the great grandma sets up this trust. Here's the facts. And her grandson has three kids and then he gets divorced. And those three kids are then adopted out of the family by the stepfather. And the, the, the grandson's new wife, who has a child with him, tries to say, wait a minute, now that these three first three kids have been adopted out of the family, they no longer have rights under great grandma's trust to receive any money. And she wants all that money to flow over to her child, which would be also a great grandchild uh, of the great grandmother. <clears throat> and the trust uses this language. I'm gonna read it to you. And it's very common language. And you might think it's obvious, but it uses this language. It's a trust for property to her grandson's then living children, share and share alike, so equally. So she just describes it by naming the kids. And uh, this case is also important because it talks about the class of children receiving rather than by their name. And that's important. So when we're drafting, you might want to consider avoiding this confusion by identifying people identifying their name specifically and specifically their trust interest. So if there was three, it'd maybe be one third, one third, one third. Great grandma knew that this fourth child was on the way. She could have adopted or she could have uh, modified her trust later, but she did not. <clears throat> she just left it, the, the kids, the children, which were really her great, great grandchildren. So uh, first of all, you've got a, a drafting issue from great grandma describing the then living children. Uh, so you've got a class description, so be careful with that. Also, the Court of Appeals used this language, and I want to raise it in your awareness so you know that the law is the law, but it base, is based on the facts of what has happened. And we're constantly counseling you to document things and that things are very fact sensitive. So the court said, right, we hold under these facts. And so it's very specific that just these facts might be interpreted differently if the facts are slightly different, uh, that the, the kids are not disinherited because of the adoption. And here's the key fact. The key fact is that they were adopted out of the family after the settler died. So all of this trust was in place, all of these things were happening, all these distributions were occurring for a number of years, and then she died, right? Then the great-great-grandma, the great-grandma died. And so these kids had been receiving a trust share, it sounds like, for years, and then they're adopted out as adults, and then the stepmom of that situation comes in and says, no, I want my one great-grandchild to receive not any of you three that had been uh, part of this family before and the court said no way we're not going to do this we're not going to disinherit these kids uh, adult great-grandchildren 
and we are going to hold that they are children under the trust code statute at the time and we're going to affirm this main idea that if you set up a trust and you are distributing your property and your your estate to whoever you want that's your like super right you know you can't we as a court are not going to come back and tell you who you can give your money to and who not to you're allowed to arrange your affairs in any way that you see fit and give it to anybody you see fit so it's almost not like it's important that they were lineal descendants it was more that the great grandmother said i want these persons this class of people to receive my uh my estate and they can't be undone because of some kind of uh, adoption that occurred l later on after the fact and uh, so it's, it's real important to establish that principle that you can you have a right to arrange your affairs in any way you want and to give your property to anyone you want so the trust code fought with the adoption code they came down on the side of giving the property to the great-grandmother's heirs that she identified early on and ignoring the fact that the adoption had taken place. So really key points, the multi-generational aspect, the class description aspect, the quote-unquote fact-sensitive nature of this, that it's only under the facts presented. And then this, this idea that at the end, that the, the trust code did not define the term children at the time uh, that the testamentary trust was created. Unbelievable. So here we are, the year 2020, and we're finally getting this case. So hope you enjoyed it. I hope you consider it for your affairs, and we'd be happy to, of course, always help you in this kind of a matter. We do it on a regular basis, and uh, we want to help you defend your territory. Have a good day. Thank you.